and may the fourth be with you. Hi, I'm Daniel from Too Sexy. It's International Star Wars Day and we just released Too Sexy 16 LTS. That means it's a very well-tested version, perfect for using in a production environment. And one of the main features we're announcing today is dynamic data sources. So in the next five minutes, I'm going to walk you through what this is and why you care. So just a bit of history, data sources are used everywhere. They provide data for razor templates, they get data from somewhere, from a database, from a CSV file, or even from SharePoint. So this has been into sexy forever. But to make it very easy that you can create your own, we've made them dynamic. So let me just quickly give you an example of what this kind of means. Here's a, a visual query. So data sources don't need queries, but it's easier to understand what's happening. This query here has a data source from the app giving us data. It's going to get the stream term, going to pass it through another data source, which does filtering, which will get a parameter from the URL. And based on this, it's going to return data to then do something. It can give it to JavaScript, to Razor, whatever. You can also use data sources in your code, of course, but this just gives you a good idea of how to visualize it. And this is just a very simple example from the glossary app which just has terms and details. A more sophisticated example is this one here. This is the blog app. If it looks daunting, don't worry. Basically, this is just a bunch of data sources which say get the current blog post, get the previous one, get the next one, and provide it to the UI so that it can then visualize it nicely. Now, everything I'm gonna show you now is going to be on the live tutorial, so you can see the code running in real time. Everything you see on this website is live code. So no, no, nothing like just fake or something. It's really the code that you see is actually the code that's running. I'm going to show you the link right now and <clears throat> just go here. And based on this, I'm going to scroll down a bit to the data and data sources section to create custom dynamic data sources. Now, one more detail. You've always been able to create data sources, but you had to do it making a DLL, compiling it, distributing it, and that was quite sophisticated. But now it gets really easy. So let me just show you a very simple example. Here you can see data coming from a data source, and this is really it. Basically, here's the code that gets the data. You see here, get source with the name basic 101. I'm going to show you the basic 101 in a moment. It will count the items and then loop through them and show them. As you can see, there's just one item inside it and it's just a hello message with a favorite number. Of course, the answer to everything. This is the code of the data source. As you can see, it's just 10 lines. And this is the power of the dynamic data sources. These files are included in your app folder. So if you distribute it, it's included they're very simple to write, they have a very simple API, and it's much easier than the previous DLL implementation. As you can see, this provides data on the out stream, and it will just have a hello message and an answer. And just in this example, we're just forwarding one single record. Okay? If you go through the tutorial, you'll see more explanations here. There's a commented version that explains what each line of code does but we're not gonna do this now. Let's go to the next step, returning a list. Here you can see similar setup, but we have a whole list. And the code is a little more advanced. We don't have a real source. We're just gonna number one to five and produce a list of items with those numbers. Very simple. Your code could of course get them from a web API or from anywhere else you want just to provide data as a data source. This is again a simple example. Let's look at configuration because if you look at like a filter data source, it will need to know what value to filter for. That's a configuration. You're saying, give me the filter and filter for all the coconuts or something like that. And as you can see here, um, the code here will also do this kit data get source. Um, that's the name of our data source. And here are the options saying, okay, I want three items and I would like the favorite color to be dark blue. You can see three items. Here we can see what the code does. 
it's again very simple we've shortened the constructor and everything a little more and we have the configuration it's again very simple you need an attribute configuration you need a default value or other options like here with numbers and stuff like that again very easy to use and let's continue with providing multiple streams because a data source can have either one stream here are my 20 items but it can also have multiple streams like a stream containing folders and a stream containing files or a stream containing coconuts and the other one containing peaches so for multiple streams again we have a live demo the first one is just the default stream so there's uh, no actually this one here's a setting stream and here's a, a default stream and again you can see the output it shows both of them and everything just works so you can see all this is now really easy before it was much harder let's look at an example where a data source is like a middle piece this is a bit like this one here where you're already getting data doing something with it and forwarding it in this case we're processing data coming from the in and you can see here we have a good sample how to get the in data possibly return an error if something didn't work like the in was not attached and in this case it's just going to filter and only get the odd items in the source and of course here's also an example um, if there's an error in which case the code doesn't fail but it will just provide one item containing the error message so what if the code itself didn't want to get attached but wanted to get the data from elsewhere to provide it again here's a simple example this data source itself will also get the data from the app and filter it itself do something with it and just return the data that came out of that so this is a data source that can encapsulate more logic for you of course these samples are very simple but it can get data from elsewhere as well now data sources can also be used in visual query so even the dynamic ones because let's go back here and just have a quick look the built-in sources there's a lot of them already okay but what about the dynamic ones because in this sample you don't see any dynamic data sources but in this case, we're going to use the data sources that were just made in a query. Here is the query. You can see the keep odd from the previous example and the authors. What you'll see here is that all the dynamically compiled data sources are automatically going to appear and they're available and this just works. So in this case, again, we're just going to get the authors. We're going to run it. You can see there were six originally, four of them had an odd ID and that was it. Now, that's the first version here just getting a query but what if the query needed to have a configuration even there we've got you covered if the dynamic source has a name like with config or whatever just add configuration to it and make a content type for that so if your content type was called these are my settings it won't work but if it's called my data source dot configuration it's just gonna pick it up automatically and make it available here's an example of a data source with a configuration and you can see if I mouse over it I get the, 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 the widget here which I did not get here because these do not have that so I go here I click on this I can edit it everything just works so you can see configuration is covered and in very special advanced cases you might want to make some special changes because your data that is created in your data source is just going to be magically converted to entities but sometimes you want more control maybe you want to influence what the id is going to be or you want to influence that it's not just an unspecified content type but person or again coconut so very simple go here and create data factory options where you can say how the conversion is going to happen before the data is provided to the next level now we're going to switch over to the documentation on docs.2sexy.org so you get the tutorial you get a really well worked out guide that will walk you through creating your first data sources go ahead try it and combine it in queries do whatever you want enjoy it and may the fourth be with you thank you for watching from the i jungle boy or daniel from too sexy